Howdy folks and welcome back to World of Warships with Rear Admiral, I've almost forgotten my name there. <laughs> I'm getting too old for this shit. With Rear Admiral Jingles. And today's battle sees the return of everyone's favourite torpedo beater. This is of course Euro, although once again going incognito. But this time he's hiding under a different nom de guerre. This time he's going by the name... I apologise in advance for this. Actually, no I don't. He's going by the name Thunderers Are Ass Cancer. <laughs> uh, I'm just going to let that one sink in for a while. <laughs> well, they are. I mean, what else do you expect when you take a battleship that's armed with 18-inch guns and has a very low surface detection range, and then you introduce the Deadeye skill? <laughs> Thankfully, that situation is going to change in the hopefully near future, but for the moment, Thunderers are ass cancer. Uh, Euro is not in a Thunderer today, however. He's in the ARP version of the Japanese Tier 5 battleship, the Congo. This explains the eye candy uh, scattered liberally all over the beautiful lines of this Japanese battleship. ARP standing for Arpeggio of Blue Steel, Japanese anime show that I'm pretty sure was the very first collaboration that World Warships got into, spawning a whole range of uh, neon versions of existing Japanese ships. Three for the Congo, and I think there's also three for the Atago. There's a lot. I have quite a few of them myself. Uh, not that I have any interest in the anime, but, well, the Congo's a good ship, the Atago's a good ship, and more Congos and Atago's in your port is not going to be a bad thing. If there were any further proof required that this is, in fact, Euro himself, watch what he's doing here. Do you see that? Wasn't even aiming at the target jingles. Well, he kind of was and he kind of wasn't. He recently published a video uh, showing off how it's possible to be ridiculously accurate by doing exactly that under the right circumstances. I don't pretend to really understand what it was that he was doing, but it basically involves aiming right above a target and allowing the auto-aim lock-on to basically guide your shells to the intended point. It doesn't work every time, there's a trick to it, and it didn't work there, and we're not going to see him doing it again in this battle, but it is a thing, at least until Maybe it gets patched out? I don't know. I'll put a link down below in the video description to the video where Euro uh, showed how it works and took ridiculous advantage out of it. He does a lot of this sort of thing though, figuring out ways to game the system. I remember in particular, I can't remember the specific details actually, but there was something about a triple division where you had a carrier and a pair of Yamatons and you use the carrier for nothing other than spotting the enemy carrier and then the Yamatos obliterate it right at the start of the match. Thoroughly satisfying, thoroughly effective, and yet when other people started doing it, apparently they were getting banned. <laughs> because Wargaming doesn't like it when you sink aircraft carriers. Again, I can't remember the specific details, and I probably should have looked them up before starting to talk about it, but it was something to do with um, promoting a toxic atmosphere. <laughs> or... You're not supposed to be able to sink aircraft carriers. Please stop doing it. We're trying to present monthly statistics to our shareholders that aircraft carriers are a success. Please stop sinking them. <laughs> I believe that was the translated version. Uh, but Jingles Wargaming doesn't have shareholders. It's not a public company. Oh, shut up. You know what I mean. Safe to say, Euro has not had a particularly good start, and neither have the team as a whole, having just sank their first enemy ship for a loss of three of their own, with the Acasta that got the kill immediately being finished off himself. The team only has one cap, they are way behind on points, with the enemy team in possession of two, and they're busy flipping a third. Euro is definitely going to have to step up his game. He has been particularly unlucky unleashing salvos at stationary targets that have managed to ground themselves, but, well, if you've ever been in this kind of situation, it's not unusual for your shells to go absolutely every... Whoa, what's going on with the Phoenix? Is he... Has he gone AFK? See, this is exactly the sort of thing that I'm talking about. It's almost as if the lock-on 
an auto-aim assist that is part and parcel of World of Warships has a bit of a problem whenever you're shooting at a target that isn't actually moving. Whether they're just sitting dead in the water like the Phoenix over there, or whether they've run aground. It's almost as if the auto-aim takes into account movement, even when the target isn't actually moving. What are you talking about, Jingles? He nearly destroyed the Phoenix. Well, yeah, because he got two Citadels, and every hit on a Phoenix is a Citadel because it's a Phoenix, but watch what happens when he fires without the benefit of lock-on assist. A further three hits, although one of them arrived after the Phoenix had been sunk. I mean, I don't know. Maybe, maybe it's just confirmation bias, but in my experience, your guns are way less accurate when locked on and firing at a stationary target than when locked on and firing at a moving target. And after five years of playing World of Warships, I have yet to see anything that's going to persuade me otherwise. Let me know in the comments if you've experienced the same thing yourself. Or if you haven't and you think I'm wrong and you have any evidence to indicate otherwise. Oh look, enemy carrier. Shots out. Remember the Congo has eight guns. And the carrier is moving, just, you know, not very quickly. It's gone undetected. Nothing. <laughs> Jingles, I feel you may be cherry-picking the evidence here. Well, yeah, possibly. Or possibly it's because he's shooting at a carrier. Remember, you're not supposed to be able to sink them. Anyway, come on, Euro. One kill, 50% of your team's total, 25,000 damage. Your team have lost five ships. And the enemy team still have twice the number of cap circles. Going for the Königsberg. Tier 5, German cruiser, like the Phoenix, made of citadels. Yeah, there it is. The good thing about these 14-inch guns is they don't tend to over-penetrate as much as, for example, 15 or 16-inch guns on targets like the Konigsberg, which has very, very thin armour. Shots out with the rear turrets. That's looking pretty good. Nowhere near good enough. Got the front turrets ready to go. And again, I mean, it's damage. It's just not great damage. And the team have lost another ship. The enemy team are now not far short of 500 points ahead. An initial decent hit on the enemy Congo, and a further two penetrations following up the torpedo strike from the friendly carrier and the Congo returning fire, has revealed his position. Just in time for the front turrets to reload. This has got to be a kill, come on. There it is. And he's successfully defended the cap. But of course, RNGesus giveth and RNGesus taketh away. Scratch one enemy Congo and the enemy team respond by immediately sinking another tier 5 battleship, in this case the friendly New York. Euro's team now only have five ships left, one capture point, and they've only managed to sink three enemy ships between them, two of which Euro was responsible for himself. Somebody on the enemy team there in chat with a sense of humour, letting Euro know how much he appreciates the name Thunderers are ass cancer. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, the reputation of that ship certainly appears to be getting around. Oh, look, it's another enemy ARP combo. But he's not angled. And Euro it could have taken some nasty damage there. Enemy Congo caught him in the turn. Neither ship able to inflict much in the way of appreciable damage on each other. And oh, wait, what's going on? Somebody other than Euro just sank something. The friendly carrier just got a kill. Well, one of the friendly carriers. There are, of course, two of them. In case it wasn't obvious, this is, of course, a double carrier game. Oh, deep, deep joy. And then the friendly Hermes, who just knocked out one of the enemy V-170s, follows it up immediately by also knocking out the Konigsberg. It's still not even close to being enough, of course. But I guess well done to the Hermes player. The one thing the team needs desperately right now, well actually the two things that the team needs desperately right now are caps and kills. And in the absence of caps, kills will do. Some disappointing hits at the New York there, but he was angled. He's actually sailing into a crossfire here. Although it's difficult to see where he could go at this point, as badly outnumbered as they are. 
and not be sailing into a crossfire. Some shots there from the Italian Cavour. Let's not forget the Congo behind him. And the Cavour has been joined by, as he attempts to get some payback, an enemy Ishizuchi. So, New York in front, Cavour, Ishizuchi off to one side, Congo behind him, and also coming under air attack. <laughs> Well, there's no reason why the carrier shouldn't be joining into the fun, too. Or carriers, let's not forget, there are two of them. But Euro and the Piotr Veliki with them don't really have much of a choice. They need this cap. They're 400 points behind. It's difficult to see how they're actually going to be allowed to cap. Then again, I suppose if all of the enemy ships concentrate their fire on Euro, the Piotr Veliki is not being reset. Oh, nice shot. He's got the Ishizushi. Well, he was on very low health. It didn't take much of a hit, and he did get a Citadel, so that's guaranteed the kill. And here come those bombers. Fun for all the family. Though the bad news, as if they needed any more, they have just lost their Hermes. Although the friendly Congo, who's desperately trying to defend the carriers, did manage to sink the enemy. Minakazi. Hang on a second. What's going on here? Is that... Is that New York on AFK? You know, I think he has. Quick look at the minimap, though. The surviving friendly carrier, the Hosho, appears to be heading towards the enemy Congo, not away from it. You know what? We'll give him the benefit of the doubt. We'll just say it's yet another autopilot bug. Because if I am being completely fair here, something that I rarely am, but today we're going to be, as, uh... Yeah, that's one very definitely AFK, New York. Euro, waiting until he's got as good a broadside as he's going to get. Finishes him off, multiple citadels, nicely done. 90,000 damage. Um, but yes, regarding the friendly carrier, while you're controlling aircraft, the game doesn't allow you anything but the most basic control over the carrier, which basically means that if you need to move, you have to do it by setting autopilot waypoints. And it is a notoriously glitchy system. Of course, an equally likely explanation is that the Hosho just wants to drive closer to the Congo so he can hit him with his sword. Meanwhile, the Cavour, who appears to be firmly of the opinion that Euro's team are not allowed to have more than one cap at a time, is busy flipping the only capture point that Euro's team have had since the start of the game. Euro lands a couple of hits, manages to get a reset off, but with the slow rate of fire of a battleship, it's virtually impossible to arrest a capture unless you manage to sink the ship that's doing it. On the bright side, they're still 200 points behind, but at least it's now 4 versus 4. I'm not sure what's taken the enemy Congo over there quite so long to finish off that Hosho, though. He's been shooting at that Hosho for the best part of the last two minutes and still hasn't quite managed to sink him. If you're thinking, that must be a fluke, just wait and see what happens when Euro rounds this island and is faced with the two enemy carriers. Because, of course, given the pounding that he's currently suffering, regardless of anything else, his priority now is, of course, to knock out those two carriers before they finish him off. The relentless air attacks that he's suffering does at least mean... Oh, and the enemy Congo has finally finished off the Hosho. But the relentless air attacks that he's suffering do at least mean that he's not far away from earning an air defence medal, something that the Piotr Veliki with him has already achieved. There's the Langley, and there's the Vesa. Watch this. Oh, and there's the air defence expert. Nice. Doesn't mean anything, of course. Point blank range, eight 14 inch guns. <laughs> Well, of course it is. <laughs> Carriers. They can hit you anywhere, anytime they want, from whatever angle they like. They're better at spotting than destroyers. And when you do get the opportunity to hit back, they're tankier than a fucking battleship. <laughs> Aircraft carriers are a perfectly balanced class. Ah, however, he did manage to get the Langley with his secondaries. No doubt after the Piotr Veliki, giving him a severe kicking. 
However, he did just earn a string of awards in very close succession. Air defense expert, confederate, high caliber, close quarters combat expert, but more importantly, Kraken Unleashed. The Langley was his fifth kill. And since he has his Soroko Yamamoto as his captain, that just activated the second wind talent. He finally takes the Vesa down, kill number six. And the second wind talent, as well as triggering a much needed emergency heal, now also means that his 14 inch guns are firing a lot faster. There's just him and the Piotr Veliki left. And they're facing an enemy ARP Congo and an enemy Cavour. The two enemy ships are still in the process of flipping Capture Point Charlie, so they're right up to the northern edge of the map. Both Euro and the Piotr Veliki are right down at the southern end of the map. Anxious to get some idea as to the exact location of the two enemy ships, Euro launches his spotter plane and fires off his guns, and did get detected when he fired. So that gives him some idea at least of how close one or both of those two enemy ships are. And somebody just fired back but managed to do so undetected. The enemy team are more than 300 points ahead. They have three of the four caps, and there are less than five minutes of the battle remaining. Euro is convinced that this game is a defeat. Doesn't mean he's going to stop trying, but it's difficult to see how they can possibly win. With three caps and a points lead, all the enemy team have to do is nothing, and they're going to win this match. But you would be amazed at just how difficult some people find it to do nothing. Here comes the Congo. Euro, thanks to his spotter plane, was able to get some shots off undetected. Scores a couple of hits. It's decent damage, but it's not decisive. I'm not entirely sure what that Congo was thinking. Actually, I'm not even sure the Congo was thinking at all. Although there are a couple of explanations that leap to mind. I note that he has four kills, perhaps he's anxious to get a Kraken unleashed. Or perhaps he was thinking, I really need to flip that uh, fourth cap. Especially since it's becoming obvious that Euro is equally determined to flip one of his own. But he doesn't need to flip that cap. He's at nearly 900 points. Two caps would be enough. All he has to do is not die. And he's doing exactly the opposite of what he needs to do in order to not die. The Piotr Veliki is flanking over to the east, which means that the Congo is driving deeper and deeper into a crossfire. And you know how dangerous crossfires can be. So he's doing his level best to try to angle against both targets. But the closer he gets, the more difficult that's going to be. It's just a simple matter of angles. But the thing is, he doesn't need to angle against two crossfires. All he needed to do was not sail south. He could have just picked an island up to the north, hid behind it, counted to 300, and the game would have been over with a victory for the enemy team. But by coming south, whether because he wanted to flip that cap and gain some capture points, or whether because he wanted to get a Kraken unleashed, he's basically guaranteeing that he's going to die in a crossfire. He spots the Piotr Veliki at the worst possible moment for him, and the best possible moment for Euro, and dies to a well-placed 14 inch shell when he was on 961 points. Another 30 seconds, the enemy team would have won this match. The enemy team's 450 point lead has just dropped to a 350 point lead, but the Cavour now just needs to do nothing in order to win. If he can do nothing for one minute, Oh dear. <laughs> Dude, what are you doing? <laughs> You're going the wrong way. You're at 953 points. You have three caps. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> what do you have to gain by getting shot at? Oh, he's turning away. It looks like the penny has dropped. He's just realised. <laughs> Unfortunately... But fortunately for Euro and the Piotr Veliki, he realised far too little and far too late. Who can get the final kill? Are we looking at an 8 kill victory from a team that was 450 points behind? Yes we are. <laughs> and all they had to do to win was nothing. It turns out doing nothing 
is a lot harder than most people give it credit for. Euro, or to give him his name in this particular game, Thunderers are ass cancer. <laughs> snatching victory from the jaws of defeat, although to be fair, I think it was more a case of the enemy team snatching defeat from the jaws of victory. But either way, eight kills, we'll take it. I hope you enjoyed today's video, and as always, take care, stay safe, and I'll catch you next time.